In this video, I'm going to show you how to time code sync multiple Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras for free so that you can speed up your multicam workflow. When you're editing a multicam shoot, you just need a simple and quick way of being able to sync up all of your camera angles. And the quickest and also the most accurate way of doing that is to have all of your cameras running the exact same time code, because then when you come to put the footage in your editor and create a multicam clip, all of the angles sync up perfectly. Now the great thing about the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras is they have an internal time code, but they also have the ability for you to bring in an external time code as well through the 3.5 millimeter microphone input on the side of the camera body. Usually you'd use a time code generator device, something like a Tentacle Sync or an UltraSync One, but those devices can be expensive. So I'm going to show you how to do it for free using just a Mac and a regular 3.5 millimeter stereo aux cord. The first thing you're going to need to do is download an app for your Mac and that app is called Hooray. I think that's how you say it, but I'll put a link in the description below so that you can easily find it. Uh, this is the website here. It is a paid for app, but there is a demo download that you can download. I would say um, it's worth paying for, but for what we need it for, the demo will work just fine. So I'll leave that up to you guys, but I always think support the developer if you find the app useful. Um, I've already got it downloaded, so let me fire it up here. And then I'll show you how, or how to get started and what you need to do. And then basically this is a time code, or you can use it as a time code generator. It does a lot more than that. A couple of things to notice on this first front screen is you have the two main options that I use is there's a normal playback mode. So if you wanted to physically set the time code that you want to be jammed into your camera, you could go into this normal mode and then click on each one. And let's say you wanted it starting from zero, zero, zero. You could just type that in. Uh, but the mode that I really like to use, and I'll explain that just why in a sec, is this far one over here that looks like a, a stopwatch or a clock and it is time of day mode. And what that will do is when you hit play, it will actually set the time code to the internal Mac time or the, 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 the uh, time code on your Mac. So if we just hit play here and you can see as I've hit play, we now have a time code running that is of the time of day. It matches what is up here in the top right hand corner of my Mac. I'll just hit stop there because there's a couple of other settings worth looking at. Uh, your format, so you can actually select what format you're filming in so that the time code matches that. I'm doing 25 frames per second, so I've just left it on 25. And then the final thing that you need to do to actually get the audio out from your Mac is create one of these LTC generators. So I'll just remove the one I've got right here. You can see it disappears. And all you're gonna do is down here in the bottom right hand side of the app, you're just gonna click LTC generator. Uh, and then I didn't make any changes here. That's just, uh, you, it's up to you to select where you want the audio going out from. I've left it because I'm going to use the headphone output. So I've left it as the default, the built-in default. And then uh, you can also set the volume level as well. But I kept all those the same and it's been working fine for me. So to start up the generator, all you're going to do is hit the play button to start the time code. And you can see there we've gone back to time of day. And then when you're ready, um, you're just going to click this tick box, tick box here and that will start generator number one. Now what that will do is, because I don't have any headphones plugged in at the moment, that will play it out of my speakers. So it will sound something like this. Not a nice sound, but that is an LTC timecode audio file. But we want to send that to the camera. So what we're going to do is in our headphones, or headphone output from your Mac, you're going to plug that in, turn your volume, or make sure your volume is all the way up to full, and then here's the key bit. We're going to get my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema camera, turn it on, and you'll notice here when you turn it on, you do have uh, a time code already. Now if at the top of when you turn on your Blackmagic camera it just says 0000, and that's the time code there, and it's not uh, it's not spinning around. That's the recording one. So you'll notice when you hit record, then it will st start the time code. But to access the internal time code of the Blackmagic camera, just tap that 0000, and you'll see the internal time code. 
To jam the external one in, it's really simple. We're just going to open up and plug in to the microphone input. And then once all that's done, all we have to do, as I say, is tick this LTC timecode generator one. As soon as we do that, we'll notice on the camera that we get a little, a few things change. Number one, you'll instantly see that the time code has changed. It now matches the one that is showing in Hooray. The other thing we'll get is a little notification next to the time code that says EXT, and that is uh, indicating that it is getting the time code externally from an external source. In this case, it's our generator running on the Mac. If we were to actually stop and untick the LTC generator here on our Mac, You'll notice on the camera, it changes from EXT to, EN, uh, to INT that now says that that time code is now what has been set as the internal time code on the Blackmagic camera. So if we wanted to, we could completely unplug this and we can see the time code has actually stayed the same. And that is effectively what you're going to do for all of your cameras that you're using for your multicam recording. You're just going to go around, uh, plug into each camera, set the time code, unplug, into the second camera, third camera, and all of them, and they're all going to be time code synced, which is going to make it really easy, as I'm going to show you now, when it comes to the editing phase. Okay, so I've jumped into my editor here. I'm using DaVinci Resolve 16, but everything that I'm showing you will apply exactly the same for Adobe Premiere, Final Cut, or pretty much whatever editor you are using. Now, I've shot some clips of a kettle here using my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras and the technique that I just showed. I've got a wide angle shot here and I've also got a close up and both are time code synced as I showed earlier on in this video. So let me show you how I'm going to turn it into a multi-cam clip. The first thing I'm going to do here is just select my clips and drag them down into the media pool. And then what I like to do here first is actually set some metadata to make it easier on the multi-cam clip creation. So. I'm going to select my wide angle that I've got here and just bring up the, uh, the metadata tab. If you don't have it up here, you can just click this button up in the top right hand corner to bring the metadata tab up. And the great thing about the Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras and DaVinci is there is so much metadata that you can add in to make your life easier when you're editing in DaVinci. There's even more. I'm using the shot, shot and scene menu right now, but if you click on this button in the top right hand corner, you've got a whole host of metadata menus that you can delve into. Um, but the one that I like to use when creating a multi-cam clip, if I just scroll down here, is camera. And I like to name my camera based on what shot they were getting. So in this case, I'll type in wide, and then I can select my other camera here, and that was a close-up. So I'll just label that as such, and then if we flip between them, you'll see it keeps that da da uh, data within and has uh, saved the metadata. So now I can actually start creating our multi-cam clip. So just select the two clips, right hand click, and then click create new multi-cam cam clip. We can give it a name, multi-cam kettle, let's call it. The frame rate, I'm gonna keep the same. Now with the angle sync, because we use this time coding method that I detailed before in the video, I'm gonna select time code. And then the angle name, I'm just gonna say, use that metadata of the camera name. And uh, everything else we can keep the same. And I'm just gonna say, move these angles into a new original clips bin as well. So I'm gonna hit create. You can see we've got it there. We've got our multi-cam clip here and the old original clips have now been placed in this original clips folder. So we can head over to the timeline now. And what I'm gonna do is drag that multi-cam clip onto the timeline here. You see here it is. Now right now we can only see one angle. So what I'm gonna do is in this left-hand preview window, I'm just gonna click this button here to bring up the multi-cam viewer. And there we go, we can see all of our angles now. Now one thing to point out is if you followed my method for time code syncing the cameras, you shouldn't need to touch your multi-cam clip at all. But if for any reason you do need to, of course, you've still got the flexibility to open it up in a timeline and then adjust the sync of some of the camera angles or anything that, any adjustments that you need to do. So that is there if you need to. 
but let's just return back to the main timeline because everything for me is perfectly in sync. So what I'm going to do is just find the start where both cameras started. I need to zoom into my timeline a little bit. So round about there. So we'll make a cut there, delete the beginning, do a ripple edit, a uh, ripple delete. And then I'm just going to hit play. And you'll see here, because we've got the multicam editor in this left hand window, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to cut the video. There was no audio anyway, but if I wanted to cut both audio and video at the same time, you could select this middle option here. Or if I just wanted to cut between the audio channels, I could use this option here. But for me, it's video I'm concentrating on. And I'm just going to hit play. Uh, you know what? I'm going to start on a, a wide. So we'll go start on the wide, cut over to the close up camera, maybe go back to the wide here. And you start to get the idea. It's just simply as simple as clicking the camera angles that we want to cut to. And you can see it making cuts on the timeline as we click. Let's uh, scroll along our timeline to a bit more action. So what have we got here? Well, there we go, where it starts to boil. Same applies, just cutting between close-up camera and the wide. It couldn't be simpler. And just to prove that Everything is in sync. Towards the end, I stuck up my phone here with a time code on. Uh, there we go. That's nice and clear. So you can see on the wide, we've got 0290. And if we cut to the close up, you've got exactly the same there as well. So there you have it. That is how I jam an external time code into my Blackmagic Pocket Cinema cameras for multi-cam shoots. I hope you found this video useful. If you did, please do give it a like up. Uh, any comments, put them in the comment section below. I always reply to as many of them as I can. And don't forget, if you're new here, hit the subscribe button. I am trying to upload a little more on this channel, more tips and tricks, how to use Blackmagic cameras and other broadcasting devices as well. So more of that to come. And if you're new, make sure you hit subscribe. Thanks for watching.